So in this video, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know from A to Z about print on demand. So print on demand is one of the most popular e-commerce business models, especially for beginners, because it doesn't require you to have a large upfront capital to start, but yet it has the potential to earn a high profit. The purpose of this is to provide you with all the necessary knowledge you need in order to start a successful print on demand business. So you can eliminate any confusion and be crystal clear on your next steps. So here are the list of topics that we will go through. We're going to talk about what is print on demand, what are the benefits of this model, how to pick a profitable niche, how to find proven product ideas, how to create designs even as a total beginner, what type of online store is best for you, choosing the right printing partner to work with, what tools you would need in order to succeed, as well as how to list and sell your products. So these topics are organized in the five main sections as follows. And I will also have timestamps listed in the description down below. So if there's a specific topic that you want to learn about first, feel free to jump ahead. But if you are a complete beginner, I do recommend you to watch the entire video all the way through. So without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. So in case you're brand new, we're going to talk about what is print on demand. So print on demand is basically a e-commerce business model where you can sell items such as t-shirts, mugs, posters, or phone cases, or they could be any type of items. And they're only printed and shipped only after an order has been made. So here we're going to look at the print on demand process. So there's basically four main steps in the entire process. So your first main objective in your print on demand business is to find winning products and designs. And then you want to create and list those products in your online store. After you have your products listed in your online store you want to drive traffic to your store so you can make sales and after a sale is made your printing partner will then fulfill the order on your behalf and then ship the items directly to your customers so it's a pretty simple process when you look at this and i will go through each step in details so next let's talk about the benefits of print on demand so first of all it is an evergreen e-commerce business model so e-commerce is only getting bigger every year so there's always a market for good print on demand items next benefit is that it is low cost to start it doesn't require you to have much capital so it limits your financial risk and the next one is appealing to most people is that it eliminates the need for carrying any inventory because products are only printed when there's demand so that gives you the ability and freedom to sell any print on demand items that you want without having to carry any inventory. So that is a huge benefit. Next one is that it is a scalable business model without a large upfront investment. So your main focus with print on demand is on product selection, designs, and marketing. So next we're going to talk about how to pick a profitable niche. Now your niche is very important with print on demand because it will make or break your business. Now what makes a good niche? So I would say that it's something that you have a strong interest in. So you actually will enjoy the process of researching and creating content for it and stick to it. So I think that's really important. Next is something that you are knowledgeable about. So you actually understand the audience. Now with this one, you can always research the niche and gain more knowledge over time. So I think it's a huge plus if you become knowledgeable about the niche. Next one is that it has a large enough audience, ideally not too broad of a niche, but yet not too narrow. Because what happens is when a niche is too broad, it's not appealing enough to the specific audience because it doesn't speak to them. But when a niche is too narrow, you won't have a big enough audience size for you to make good money on. And what you want to take note on is that the niche that you pick could either be evergreen or it could be like a trendy or seasonal niche. And my recommendation is to pick an evergreen niche. So that way your niche will be relevant year round. So you'll be able to get consistent sales. So an example of a seasonal niche would be something like snowboarding, because typically in most places, people can only do that in the winter. And an example of an evergreen niche would be something like yoga, because people can do yoga anytime during the year. So to check if your niche is seasonal or evergreen is really simple. You can just come to Google Trends and you can just type up your niche. So for example, I'll type in snowboarding, just hit enter. And what you want to do is make sure that United States is selected. And for the time frame, what you can do is select past 12 months. So that way you'll be able to see the trends over the course of a year window. So that gives you a pretty good idea whether the niche is seasonal or evergreen. So in this case for snowboarding, you can really see that this is May here in the beginning of the graph all the way to, let's say in October, it's not really popular during this time. So, you know, not too many people will be talking about it. And as you can see here, it's really popular during the winter, you know, few months, but then it dies down after winter and going into the spring and summer months. So this is what I would consider a seasonal niche. Now let's search for another one. Let's do yoga. 
as another example. So when you type in yoga using the same you know, criteria, United States and last 12 months, as you can see, this is a evergreen niche because throughout the year, the interest is pretty high. It's around above 70 most of the time. And then it goes up even higher here. So this would be a good example of an evergreen niche. So next you could start to find your niche. So first of all, you just want to brainstorm. You can just write down all of your hobbies or interests. Just write them down on a piece of paper. And what you can do next is to get ideas from ChatGPT. And this is the prompt that you can use. So a prompt in ChatGPT is basically the instructions that you give the AI for it to be able to come up with the answer for you. And what I'll do is I'll include this prompt in a document that I'll share with you where you'll find all the information that I talk about in this tutorial to make it easier for you. So you can just copy and paste it from the document and I'll leave the access down in the description. So what I'll do next is to just copy this prompt, highlight it, right click, copy, and then let's head to ChatGPT. So here we are in ChatGPT. Now, if you have not signed up for an account in ChatGPT, it's super simple. You can just go to Google and just search OpenAI and come to the OpenAI official website and just come up here to products, go to ChatGPT for everyone. And here you'll be able to just sign up for a free account. And once you're signed in, this is what you should be able to see. And you can come up here to make sure that you are selecting the newest model. So for right now, that would be GPT 4.0. That would be the newest and also free model. So we can make sure that that's selected and then just come down here in the text box and just paste the prompt that we had copied. So this is a prompt that we are going to use. I want to start a print on demand business and I'm looking for unique and targeted niches that can appeal to a specific audience. It's important to have the specific audiences to be passionate about the niches. The niches need to have a large following size in the USA and needs to be evergreen, meaning it's not a seasonal niche. Can you generate a list of 20 niche ideas for print on demand products? Avoid any niches where trademark infringement is common, such as any sports teams or films related niches. Also avoid any controversial niches such as political, alcohol, and gambling related niches. Press enter or just hit this arrow. And then ChatGPT should be able to come up with the 20 niche ideas for you. So here we go. Here we are looking at the 20 niche ideas. So number one, we have pet lovers, and then we have fitness enthusiasts, yoga practitioners, travel, bookworms, gardening, music lovers, outdoor adventures, cooking and baking, and so on and so forth. So these seems to be really good niches. So let's say if you cannot pick from the 20 that's generated, you can also ask for provide 10 more. And then ChatGPT will be able to provide you even more examples. And then you can see which one you possibly can resonate with the most. So this should be able to give you a lot of ideas in terms of selecting the right niche. And when you are considering a niche and want to find out how big the market size is, you can simply just Google it. Let's use yoga as an example. We can just type in how big is the yoga industry in the USA? press enter and then you'll be able to see some stats on it. So for yoga, the industry was a $15.8 billion industry in 2023. And we can come down here. What percentage of US population does yoga? About 10% of total population of the United States practice yoga regularly, which is roughly 35 million people. That's quite a number to consider the popularity of yoga. So from this, you could see that it could possibly be a pretty good niche. So next I'll talk about why t-shirts are always a good print on demand item to sell. Number one t-shirt is the most popular print on demand items. And the reason being is most people buy t-shirts frequently. And just think about like how many t-shirts, you know, almost everyone has, right? And they are often bought in multiples. So let's say if you were to sell something like a phone case, you know, how often do you buy a different phone case? Not too often, right? But with t-shirts, people tend to buy them frequently and they tend to buy them in multiples. Another good reason is that it is easy to get repeat customers. Once a customer purchases from your store and they get a good product and they get a good experience from it, it's very easy for them to come back to buy again. And not to mention, you will also have their contact information, what they had purchased in the past and what they like. So you can always have the option to remarket to them at any time. 
And with t-shirts, it's really good to note that funny t-shirts designs tend to do really well because when you're speaking to a specific audience, if they could relate to your design and they find it funny, those items tend to have the potential to do really well, no matter what niche you're in. So for that reason, in this tutorial, we are going to focus on selling t-shirts. And once you master the basics and the fundamentals of selling t-shirts, you can always expand your products to include any other products you want. So my recommendation is always to start with t-shirts because that is the most simple and most effective product that you could sell, especially as a beginner. And after you're able to get sales consistently, you can always expand to any other products you want in the future. So the next section, we are going to talk about the most important element in your print on demand business, which is the designs. So finding and creating winning designs is the most important element with print on demand, because let's say if you have good designs and bad marketing, you could possibly get away with it. But if you have bad designs to start with, no matter how good your marketing is going to be, it's not going to work. So speaking about good designs, you don't need to be intimidated by it simply because simple design sells. So what you need to know about print on demand is that simple designs typically sells well, as long as it resonates with the passionate audience. So simplicity is effective with print on demand. And we are going to look at a few examples. And here's how we are going to find winning designs. The first method we are going to use is to search on popular platforms such as Etsy and Amazon. So next we can come to Etsy and just search for your niche and then t-shirts. So let's use yoga as our example. And then we just type in yoga t-shirts. And what you can do is to search by top reviews. And then you can just browse through to see if there's any designs that catches your eyes. This one looks interesting. So this one, it says downward human and it has the graphic of a dog. So that might be a pretty good one. You can come down here and look at the reviews. It has more than 11,000 reviews and those are reviews for this item. And you can just see what people are saying. She loved the shirt and it fits great. Love the shirt. Super soft and not too thick. Perfect for my dog lover friend. Yeah, so something like that makes like a good, you know, gift as well. Because it's somewhat funny and people who are into yoga can definitely relate to it. And we could continue to browse through and to see if we could find other examples. So I would just keep browsing and look at the ratings reviews and also the number of reviews. So you can see it, you know, after the title of each item. So let's come back up and search funny yoga t-shirts instead. And then we could also sort by top reviews and let's see what we have here. And this one stood out to me. I'm nicer after yoga and it has this distinct font that goes with a black t-shirt. So that kind of catches my eyes. So we're going to look at it. So with print on demand, it's really useful to note that black color t-shirts uh, with a nice contrasting text color or graphics color tend to do really well. Something that just like stands out from the black colored background. So something like this, I could definitely see that it could sell. We can come to look at the reviews. So that is called a retro font. Really fun retro font will make this t-shirt a standout in yoga class for my lady. Nice fabric feel to a uh, quality item. And later in the tutorial, when we go to list our items, I'll show you exactly which uh, shirt types is the best quality types. So when you're looking at different designs, it's useful to think about how customers will feel wearing that design, because typically it's when they feel some type of emotions, that's when they are most likely to make the purchase. Whether they might think the design is just cool, it's funny, it's you know something that's informative. When you are able to tap into the emotions, that's when they're most likely to buy. So keeping that emotional impact that your customers may have while you are researching for the right designs will definitely be helpful. And then you could do the same exact research on Amazon. So you can just come to the Amazon page and search yoga t-shirts, press enter. And you can come here to the right side in the sort by tab. You can either sort by average customer reviews or even by best sellers. So we will go with best sellers. So we don't see any of the design ones. So we can be a little bit more specific. So we can do funny yoga t-shirts. So here we go. We can come to sort by and come to best sellers. And then here you'll be able to see the different designs. You can see if there's anything to catch your eyes. This one is pretty funny. Lettuce remain calm. I think that's pretty funny. That could possibly be a good one. And then this one catches my attention. Zen AF. So this is the same process that we did before with Etsy, but we can just do the same exact research on Amazon. And then the next method that we could use to get design ideas is with ChatGPT. So here's the prompt that we could use. 
I want to create t-shirt designs for print on demand in the insert your niche here. I want them to be funny. Provide me 20 examples that I can use. Avoid any trademarked or copyrighted phrases. So what we'll do now is to just copy and paste this right into ChatGPT. So here we are in ChatGPT and we can just paste the prompt here. You can modify the prompt, uh, whichever way that works for you. So we'll insert our niche here. We'll say yoga enthusiast. I want them to be funny. And once you have the prompt, you can just press enter or click this arrow. And then ChatGPT will provide you with the 20 funny t-shirt design ideas. Yoga class, I thought you said pour a glass. That's pretty funny. I bend so I don't break. Yoga hair, don't care. That seems like a popular phrase to use. Yoga is my happy hour. So some of these seems like decent ideas to use. These designs should resonate well with yoga enthusiasts while providing humorous twist. So this is how you can generate design ideas by using ChatGPT. So after you have your design ideas, it's time to create the designs. So when it comes to creating the designs, you have two options. Number one is to create the designs by yourself. And your option number two is to hire a designer. Now, if you already have some type of design experience or a design background, then obviously you can use any software that you prefer. But if you are a beginner with not much experience with design, Canva would be a great choice in that case. So Canva is a beginner-friendly software that you could use to easily create nice looking designs without needing much prior experience. So here is Canva and I'll just quickly show you how it works. It's a really great tool. You can just come to click on create a design and then you can just do a custom size here. So let's say we do 5,000 pixel by 5,000 pixel and create new design. So here you would have a blank Canva to work with. So let's find an idea that we can design just so I can show you the process. So let's do this one. It's nice and simple just so we can show you an example. So we can come back to Canva and we can go to text. We can just add a heading and just type in yogaholic you can adjust the size just by dragging these four corners. And you can adjust the placement just by dragging and dropping. So we can place this, let's say, in the middle. You're able to change the font. So there are many different fonts that you can pick. And they also have these pre-made ones. Some of these are really good. So you can use any of these texts. So basically, there are a lot of choices in terms of what kind of style that you're going for. So let's go with this one right here, for example. So we can just expand this, double click on this, and then we could adjust the text and we write yogaholic. We can delete this small text here. Adjust the size of this by just dragging one of the four corners and also adjust the placement by just dragging and dropping. So in Canva, you can also find different graphics. So if you are gonna go with different graphics, you can come to elements and search for any type of elements that you want. So let's just do yoga. So you'll be able to find some graphics here. Click on see all, and then these are different graphics that you could possibly use. And maybe something like this would look nice. Now, this is not the perfect design, I totally understand, but it's just for me to kind of show you how Canva works. Right, so you can come up with your own design with the graphics. So you can zoom out. Or something like this might be a little bit better. All right, so, but for now we are just gonna go with the text. So let's say we're just gonna place this in the middle. And to export this file, you can just come to click on share and then click on download. And then you can check the transparent background and then just click on download. So Canva is super easy to use. So next, let me show you a website that you could use to find amazing looking graphics as well as amazing looking fonts. So it can definitely help you with your design process. And the website is called Creative Fabrica. So when you come down here, you're able to see the recommendations. You're able to see the different graphics and different fonts. Or you can just come up here and search for the specific font or graphics that you may be looking for. So let's search yoga. And this is the result that I'm able to find. So a bunch of different graphics that I could use. They have many different styles. So let's say we're looking for graphics, then we can just narrow down by graphics. So as you can see, there are a lot of different graphics here that you could use. And many of them are in really high quality. And then you can also come down here and narrow down to t-shirt design. So we can check this as well. And let's say if you find one that you like. So for example, let's click on this one. 
and then you can just download it here and be able to use it. And keep in mind that in order to use most of the graphics and fonts on this site commercially and with print on demand, you do need to be on their pay plan. But their plan is relatively inexpensive. And as you can see, it's only $3.99 a month or it's only $47 for the entire year. So that is a pretty good deal, in my opinion, for the amount of high quality fonts and graphics that you are able to find on this site. So I highly recommend you to check this out. And for option number two, you can hire a designer. So there are many different platforms that you could use to hire a designer. Fiverr, I would say, would be a good one. So this is the Fiverr platform, and it's a really good site for you to find freelancer designers to create your designs for you if that's the route that you want to go. You can also look for logo design if that's something that you need or any other types of freelancing work that you may need as well. So it's a really good site overall. But for right now, we are going to search for print on demand t-shirt designs. So we can just type that in the search bar and click search. And what you can do is to narrow down by category. So let's say we will select t-shirt and merchandise. And for service options, we could do t-shirts, click apply. So you can also narrow down by the seller detail. So let's say you only want top rated sellers or level two sellers. And from here, you'll be able to just click on any one of these and see which one might be the best fit for you. And when you click on one, you're able to see the details of their services and also if they have any reviews. So for this seller, they have a lot of reviews, 4.9 stars. And if you have any questions before you order, you can also contact them if that's what you want to do. And if you want to directly just purchase from them, then you can just select the right package and just click continue, and then you'll be able to process it. So next I'll show you how to find the name of a font in case you come across a specific font that you like when you're looking at designs and you want to find out the name of it so you can create a similar design. So we'll use this one as an example. I'm nice after yoga. So what you can do is come to Google and search for my fonts, what the font. And then you can come to this website right here that says what the font. Click on this and then this is the website that could help you locate the name of the font. So what we can do here is just like screenshot this and come back to this website and we can upload that image here. And then this will be able to help you to identify the font. So you can just click on the specific font and click on identify font. You may not find the exact one, but sometimes you'll be able to. For this specific font, this one looks almost identical. So I think that's the exact font. But in the case that if you are not able to find the exact one, you're able to find very similar ones using this website. And this will also give you a selection of other fonts that you could use. So this website is really, really useful in terms of finding the right fonts that could be also good to use. So next I'll show you how to check if a word or phrase is trademarked. So first of all, you can just come to Google and search USPTO. And that's the abbreviation for the trademark office. Come to the official United States Patent and Trademark Office website. So click on the first one. And what you can do is come to trademark and go to search our trademark database and click on this trademark search system. And this is where you can enter the word or phrase that you want to search for. You can select this drop down and you could select word mark. And then in the search box, you can type in the word or phrase that you want to check if it's trademarked. So in this case, let's check for the word yoga holic. And then you want to click search. So I got the idea from just looking at Etsy and there's a t-shirt that has the word yoga holic on it. And then we are going to check if this specific word is trademarked. So type in the word, just click search. So as you can see here, three results actually came up, but they have been expired. As you can see, the status is dead or canceled. So there seems to be not a active trademark on it. So what you can do is to uncheck dead and make sure that the live button is checked. That will give you the registered trademark results and also any pending trademark results. So as you can see, there's no results that is found and only the expired ones that has uh, the trademark on this word. So this word seems to be good. And let me search for another term so I could show you a live result, what it looks like. So let's just do yoga. So when a trademark is live and registered, this is what you'll see under the status. So for this specific word mark, we have the at symbol and then the word yoga. So this specific word is trademarked. So this is how you can search to see if a word or a phrase is trademarked. So next we're going to talk about choosing the right printing partner. 
So choosing a printing partner in your print on demand business is extremely important because they will be responsible for fulfilling the order for you. So when an order comes in, you will rely on this printing partner to print your item as well as ship the item directly to your customer. So choosing the right one is super important because you will be relying on the printing partner to produce a good high quality item and also providing a good experience to your customer. So when it comes to the printing partner, Printify is my top choice. So I've used many other printing partners before and Printify has always given me good experience consistently. The product quality is really good and they have one of the largest library in terms of having different products that you could sell. They have excellent customer service, which I think is one of the most important aspect in terms of being able to provide to your customers a good experience. And lastly, their platform is really easy to use from creating and listing your products to managing your orders to fulfilling the order or handle any other customers issues. Overall, the platform is really user friendly. So these are the main reasons why I use Printify as my printing partner and why I would recommend you to use them as well. So next we are going to sign up for Printify. So I will leave my link down below in the description and it will be my affiliate links and it costs you nothing extra to use but will definitely help a lot in supporting this channel so I could keep making free useful content just like this. So I would really appreciate it if you decide to use my links. And when you click on it, it will take you to this page and then we can just come here to click on start for free. So here you have the option to sign up with either your Google account or you could just simply create an email and password and then you could sign up. So we are going to just go with Google, select your account, and then you can answer what brings you to Printify. And we can say I'm new to selling online and want to start. Click next. What best describes you? We could pick business or individual or whichever that applies to you. Click next. So what do you have experience with? So you can select the skills that you already have. I would just go with, I'm just starting out. Click next. Where would you like to sell? So here you would just select the country that you plan to sell in. So for me and for most of us watching, I would assume that it would be the USA. So click United States, click next. How did you hear about us? I would just click on YouTube, complete. So here we can see our dashboard here and everything you would need will be here on the left side. It's a really user-friendly platform. So when you click on catalog, you will see a list of the different items that they offer that you could print on. The list is pretty extensive from phone cases, bags, socks, hats, to posters, postcards. So there's a lot of choices in terms of picking the product. But for right now, in this tutorial, we will just focus on t-shirts. So let's click on t-shirts here. So this is a screen that you will be able to see. And for target market, make sure that USA is selected since that's what we are focusing on. And in terms of the quality of the t-shirts, because there are actually, you know, many different types of t-shirts and they vary in cost and quality, I would highly recommend you to go with either the Bella Canvas 3001 that has really high quality. And the second recommended choice for t-shirts would be the Gildan 64000, this one right here. This one has a slightly cheaper cost, but the quality is still really good. So these two are definitely my go-tos in terms of picking for the t-shirts. But obviously, you know, you are more than welcome to check out the other products, order the samples from them and, you know, see the quality for yourself and see which one would be the best fit for you. But if you want my suggestion, then I would go with one of these two. So let's click on this Bella Canvas 3001 and I'll show you something really important. So when you click on this product, what you can do is click on show additional providers. So with Printify, how it works is that they will actually connect you to the actual provider that will actually print and ship your t-shirts. And there are many different providers that you could choose from. So for this example, uh, as you can see here is local USA providers, and you can see a list of different providers that are able to help you to print and ship the t-shirts. So next I'll give you my recommendations for the providers to use. So my top choice will be Monster Digital. They have a really quick production time, as you can see here, average production time, less than a day. They also have many different colors that you could choose from. So you can click on plus two more here to see what other services that they are able to accommodate. So in this case, they're able to do neck labels. So that could give you a better branding for your t-shirts, which is a big plus, as well as they could do like gift messages and they're also book discount eligible. So my top choice, definitely Monster Digital. Another good choice that you could go with, I would say, would be Swift POD, this one right here. 
they also can provide the same services uh, in terms of accommodating for the branded inserts, neck labels, and gift messages. And what's more beneficial about Swift POD than Monster Digital is that they are able to accommodate the larger sizes. They can go up to 5XL, so that can give you a little bit more choices in terms of shirt sizes. And they also have a larger selection of different shirt colors, as you can see here, 121 different colors versus Monster Digital, which is 53. But if you are not selling, you know, too many different colors, you know, either could work. Swift POD are able to also print on, you know, more areas of the t-shirt. They have a slightly higher average production time, but still that is considered a really quick average production time with one and a half days being the average. And they are really consistent. So I would definitely recommend you to go with either Swift Pod or Monster Digital. And remember, these are suppliers in the USA location. And if you happen to sell in Canada, I'll show you a supplier that works really well in Canada. My recommendation would be Duplium. This one right here, that would be the best choice that I've come across if you are in the Canadian market. So next, let's go back to catalog and I'll show you something really important that you need to know. And let's say if you sell another type of products on your store, so let's say you sell phone cases as well. So let's click on this one, the tough phone cases. So let's say you have a customer that wants to purchase both the phone case and also the t-shirt from your store. What's gonna happen is they will essentially be fulfilled by two different suppliers, right? Because when you come down here, the supplier that will help you fulfill the order for the phone case would be Spoke Custom Products. And the supplier that will help you fulfill the order for the t-shirt will be Monster Digital. So what you need to be aware of is that the customer will receive two different packages and likely in two different times because the production time for different products is different. So that is something really important to know if you plan on selling different type of products in your print on demand store. So next, let's go back to our dashboard and I'll just go through really briefly about each uh, important tab. So when we go back to, let's say the t-shirts and when we go to add an item, so we come here and we go to start designing. And this is where you can upload your design and then add the product. And after you added a product, they will show up on the My Products tab. So this is where you're able to see all of your different products. You are able to sort by, you know, different print providers, different brands or statuses. And when someone places an order on your shop, they will show up on the order tab. So when you have orders here, you'll be able to see which ones are new, which ones are in production, ready to ship, and also, you know, on the way to the customer. Next, we're going to come to Wallet and we'll come to Payments. So payments, super important. I highly recommend you to add a credit or debit card here because what happens is when an order comes in, let's say someone places a t-shirt order on your store, that money will you know, get deposited into your designated account in a couple of days typically. In the meantime, you actually need to place that order with Printify so that order can get processed and the provider can you know, print and ship to your customer. So what you need to do is to make sure that your payment information is on file with Printify so that when the order comes in, you can process that payment right away. And then when you receive the funds from you know, your online store from the customer, which typically takes you know, a couple of days on average, then you could pay off the product cost with Printify here and the rest of the funds would be your profit. So that's how the process work. And that's why it's important for you to have a active credit or debit card on file so that your order processing won't be interrupted. There is also other payment option. If you prefer, you could use either PayPal or Payoneer, but I like to just keep things simple. I just upload a active uh, credit card here. So next let's go to wallet and go to taxes. So for taxes, you know, make sure this is, you know, filled out according to, you know, what applies to you. So if you're located in the USA, you're able to apply for a resale or tax exemption certificate. So you don't need to pay taxes on it because you're reselling the items. And to apply for the resale certificate, typically you just need to go to your state's website and apply for one. And once you have the certificate on hand, you're able to upload it or submit it to Printify, and then they will be able to apply the tax exemption. Next, let's go to the insights tab. So this will be where you can see different uh, useful insights about your store after you make at least 20 sales per month. So you can come back to check the stats after you complete that. So next, let's go to store settings. So when you click on store settings, you can set your store name and for ship from address. So I would just leave this at default. Let's go to order settings. So for order routing, I always leave this off. That basically refers to if a customer places an order and your designated print on demand supplier don't have stock of the item. 
So when you check this box, what's going to happen is Printify will find another supplier to help you automatically fulfill the order. So I always leave this unchecked because when, you know, something like that happens, I rather do it manually just to make sure that everything will be good. And when you come down here to order approval, so this one is an important setting to review. So at default, the order that comes in will automatically get submitted to Printify in 24 hours. So what happens is when an order comes in, you have 24 hours period to make any changes in case if a customer changes their mind or in case they request any change. So you at least have that window in case of any change that's going to happen or you could set a specific time. So let's say if you start to get many orders, it's more organized if you set like a specific time that you submit the order. So let's say if you do it at 9 a.m. each day, so that way you are able to you know, stay more organized and batch the order and automatically submit the order at a set time each day. So I would either recommend you to go with 24 hours or you could set a specific time each day for you to send in the order, whichever you prefer that you think will work better for you. And come down here for tracking notifications. I always leave this at default. Receive as soon as it is available. Delayed orders, I always leave that at default. Manual send to production. So you can just click save when you're done. So next, let's go to the branding tab. So this is where you can set up your package inserts and your neck labels, which is great for branding. So with package inserts, you're able to include your branded uh, message. It could either be like a discount code or like a thank you message or even a you know, request for them to review the products. So that is great for branding and also increase the perceived value when your customer receive your package. So I definitely highly recommend this. And the cost is very affordable as well, especially if you go with Printify Premium. So next, let's come to click on the Printify Premium tab. So when you start to generate consistent sales, then I highly recommend you to consider to go with Printify Premium. Or if you're someone even starting, but you are taking this really seriously and really confident about you know where your business is going, I would recommend you to also consider it as well because that way you can get 20% discount on all products. So when you start to do a decent volume on your store, this is a no brainer because you get a, you know, such a big discount on it. The plan is only $29 per month. So it's literally less than a dollar per day. And if you choose to go with the yearly plan, that will save you an additional 14%. So that brings your cost to only $25 per month. So that can make a lot of sense too, if that's something that you want to do. So besides that you get 20% discount on all products with the premium plan, you also get order management with Printify Connect. So Printify Connect is when they handle any reprints and refund requests from your customer for you. So that can definitely free up your time and, you know, possibly reduce your headache. So these are the benefits of Printify Premium. And if you are already doing a decent volume, it definitely makes a lot of sense just based on the amount that you are going to be able to save. So next we are going to set up our online store. So which platform should you use? So there are many platforms that you could choose from, and let's look at the pros and cons of the most popular ones. So first, let's start with Etsy. So Etsy is a very popular platform for people to list their print-on-demand items. The pros is that they have existing buyers on their platforms. So the advantage of that is that you can leverage their traffic. And it's easy to start on Etsy, and people trust the Etsy's brand name because it's such a big brand. Now let's look at the cons of Etsy. So the first big con is that it has high fees and it also has extremely high competition. Another big con, in my opinion, is that you can't sell your store. So no matter how much you build up your store, it's not possible for you to transfer ownership. And the last big con is that you don't own the customer's data. All the customer's data belongs to Etsy. So that's definitely a big con. Now let's look at the next popular platform for print on demand, which is Amazon Merch. Now, similar to Etsy, the pros is that they have existing buyers on the platform so you can leverage their traffic. And people would obviously trust Amazon because of its brand name. Now, let's look at the cons. So first, it is relatively difficult to get accepted into Amazon Merch. Next is that the competition is extremely high. You need to follow the tier system. Basically, it's a system that they will limit your sales as a beginner. You can't sell your store just like Etsy, no matter how much time you spend building up your store. There's no transfer of ownership. You won't be able to sell it. And also you don't own the customer's data. The customer's purchasing data is one of the most uh, valuable asset of an e-commerce business. So when you sell on Amazon or even Etsy, all those data actually belongs to the platforms. So next let's look at the pros and cons of Shopify. So the first pro is that it's the most scalable model if you build your business on Shopify. You own your customer's data. And like I said before, data is valuable and you actually own all of your customer's data. This also allows you to build your own brand. You are in total control of your business. 
And lastly, you can eventually sell your business. So let's say if you spend a couple years building up a business and eventually you want to sell it, you are able to do that. So now let's look at the cons of Shopify. So a big con typically is that you need to drive your own traffic to your store, either with organic or paid methods. And the other con is that you need to pay for the subscription. So in order to sell on Shopify, you would need to always maintain a subscription. So those are the cons for Shopify. And when you think about it, the pros definitely outweighs the cons. And when all things are considered, I think building your store on Shopify is the best option. And I think this method is the best way if you actually want to build a scalable business that you have full control of. So the platform that we are gonna go with is Shopify. So next, let's set up our Shopify store. So when you click on the link I have listed below, it will take you to the Shopify page where you can sign up for a free trial and enjoy the first month for just $1. So you can just enter your email address here and then just click on start free trial. You can select which option that applies to you or you can just skip all if you prefer, it really doesn't matter. Here you would just select the country or region that you're in. For me, I am in United States, so I'll just click next. And then here you can just select any one of these options to create your account. So I will just go with sign up with Google, select your account, click continue, and then your store will be created in just a few minutes. So here is your Shopify's dashboard and everything you need will be listed in the different tabs on the left side. It's a really easy platform to use and they make it really easy for you to set up. So don't be overwhelmed by any of this. I will walk you through step by step. All right, so what you need to do first is to connect Shopify to Printify. So how we're gonna do that is to come to add apps here on the left side, click on this. And where it says Printify, print on demand, you can just click install. Now, if you don't see the app here, you can just search for the app under the Shopify app store, and then you'll be able to find the app there. And when you find the Printify app, like we see here, you can just click on install. Click on install. Here you would just need to log into your Printify's account using your email and password, or you could use the Google login, whichever option that you prefer. So I'm gonna use the Google login. So I'm just gonna click here, choose my account, and then I'm logged in. So what you see here is exactly what you see in the Printify's dashboard. It is just directly integrated into Shopify now. So it makes everything so much easier. And then what you can do is to pin this app because we will use this often. So you can just click on pin to your navigation. So it'll be pinned over here. So next, what you want to do is to select a plan. And if you're just starting out, then I would recommend you to just go with the basic plan here. And then you can always upgrade as needed as you go. For the basic plan, it is currently $1 for the first month, and afterwards, it would be $29 per month. So I would just select basic, and then here you would just need to fill out your name, your card number, and then your card information, and then you just need to hit subscribe. So next, we are going to adjust some settings. So we can come down here to settings, click on this. So what you want to make sure on this page is that your time zone is accurate. You want to make sure that that is your local time zone. And then next, we can go to payments, click on payments here. What we can do is to complete the account setup for Shopify payments. So just click on complete account setup, submit details. And then here you would just need to select the option that applies to you. So for myself, I will select a registered business and I would select private single member LLC, click next. And then here on this page, you would either just need to fill out your individual's information or your business information. So on the next page, you just need to specify your industry type. So I would select retail and then subcategory, just select the one that's closest to you. I would just pick clothing and accessories. And then here you would just need to provide a description of the products or services that you plan to sell in your store. And then you would just need to provide your store phone number. And then when you're done, just click next. And then the next page, you need to provide the name of the account representative so that they know that who is in control of the business. And when you're done, you can click on submit for verification. All right, so one very important setting about Shopify payments that you wanna pay attention to is the customer statement descriptor. So this refers to the name that your customers will see on their credit card statement. So what you want to do is to make sure that the name clearly reflects your business name so your customers can recognize where the charge is coming from so that they won't file a dispute. So I'll just go ahead to put down the name of my store. So let's say if it's Yoga Aura. So you definitely want to make sure that you do that. 
And another thing that you want to make sure that you put down a phone number. Now, if you don't want to use your personal number, which makes sense, what you can do is to go to Google Voice and then just register a new number and then just use that number as your main business phone number. So that's the way that I would go about it. And next, let's come to the domain tab, click on domains. So this is where you can set up your custom domain. And this is important because otherwise your website will look something like this, a bunch of numbers and letters and then dot myshopify.com. Now you can adjust this and I think change like the prefix of this, but the best way is to definitely buy your own domain. You can either buy a new domain through Shopify or if you already have one on some other platforms, you can connect an existing domain here. So to buy one is super easy. We can just click on this buy new domain button and then just search up your name. So let's say we do yoga aura, just search. So yogaaura.com isn't available. So what I can do is to consider yogaaura.store or yogaaura.shop or .co. So all these are options and just depends on what you personally wanna do about it. But if you're able to find a good .com domain, I would say that that would be the best way to go. Just my own personal preference. I like .com domains. And when you find one that fits, you can just come here to click buy. And that's how you buy a new domain on Shopify. Now, if you already have an existing domain on another platform, what you can do is to just come here to connect existing domain, type in your domain and then click next. And it will walk you through how you can connect that domain. Next, what you want to do is come to policies. So click on policies on the left side. So here is where you can generate these stores policy and every store would need to do this at some point. So for the return policy, obviously you can just adjust to your own store's return policy. And for the written return and refund policy, what you can do is create from templates and a standardized one will be created. And then you can just adjust from there. So it can just save you a lot of time in terms of creating your own policy. So throughout the policy, you will see insert certain information in a bracket. So that's where you would just insert your own store's information. So here you would just insert your return address and we can scroll down and go to the next one. So private policy, you can do the same thing, create from template. For the highlighted text, you can definitely review them and you can scroll down. And same thing here with contact, you can just fill out your information in the bracket if that applies to you. Next one is the terms of service. Same thing, create from templates. And you can just review this and insert your information where it's applicable. So here you would just link to your refund policy so that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you fill out the information under the brackets. And when you scroll all the way down, that's the contact information. Same thing here. You would just need to fill out your own store's name, email, and also your business information. So next up is we're going to do the fun part now, which is to design the look of our storefront. So you can come to online store and go to themes. You can click here and this is the page that you will see. So a theme is basically the look of your storefront. So there are many different free themes that you could explore when you scroll down here where it says popular free themes and you can easily customize them. There's no code required. And then you can browse through the different themes and some of these are free and some of these are paid. So if you want to make your store appear a little bit more fancier, you can definitely you know have the option. But for our tutorial, we are gonna go with a free one, which is the Dawn theme. So for the beginners, I wouldn't worry too much about making my store look too fancy from the get go. Customers don't care about that. Generally, they care about what's actually in your store and not your theme. So especially if you're just starting out, I wouldn't worry about the theme and just go with Dawn. Dawn is already really nice and it converts really well. And let's say at any point in the future, you do want to change things up and go for like a fancier theme. You can always have the option to do that. So for right now, we are just going to go with Dawn and we are going to customize it and make it nice and functional. So let's click on customize. So this is the page where you can customize everything about your storefront. There are three main sections. So on the left side, there's the sections tab, there's a the theme settings tab, and then this is the app and bets. So the main two tabs that we are going to spend a lot of time on is the sections and the theme settings. And when you come to the middle, the drop down here, you can edit any pages that you want to edit. And on the right side here is where you can see how your website looks in different views. So currently it's in desktop and we can change it up to mobile. So this is how your website looks like in mobile. And it's good to note that most of your customers will come from mobile traffic. So it's really important to optimize for mobile. And that's what we are going to do. So to edit your website is super simple. You can just come into one of the settings tab 
And for each section of your website, they have their own little tab where you can expand and you can customize it in any way that you want. And we are going to go over each tab. So first let's come to the theme settings, click on logo, and this is where you can upload your own logo. So click on select image, click on upload image, and you can just select your logo and just click open, click done. And then you will see your logo here and then you can make it bigger. So let's say we can go with 150 pixel. So that's how it looks like here. We have a little logo and when you toggle onto the desktop view, you see it right here as well. So I'll just show you, this is where you can adjust the size that becomes bigger. That is way too big. So let's go with 150, click save. So next one is the favicon image. So in case you don't know what favicon is, is this little icon in front of your website's name on your browser. So like this little icon right here. So what you can do to create the favicon is to just come to favicon.io and then you have a few options here. You can either upload an image and then it will get converted into an ICO file, which is just a file type for the favicon. You could use a text or you could use an emoji. So let me show you how the text works. So for example, we can generate the entire favicon here. So let's say we want to just do the letter Y and then for the background color, we will just choose black. I like the circle background. The font is good, font size is good. So let's say that's the settings that we want to go with and then it'll look like something like this. Just click download, open up the file and then here we have the favicon and then we can come back to Shopify, select the image, add image and then select your favicon, open, click done and then there you go, that's our favicon. Click save. So let's go to the next tab, which is colors. Click on this. So this is where you can set the different color schemes that applies to certain sections of your website. So they will look uniformed throughout your pages and you won't have to adjust them one by one. It's a huge time saver. We are just going to set three different color schemes here. So just follow along and you'll see exactly why once we get to the part where we select the color schemes. So click on scheme one. And here we have scheme one and just enter exactly how I enter it. And you can always adjust this at any time in the future if you want. So for the background, let's do F A F A F A. So that's just like a little off white color for text. That's fine. Solid button background. Click on this and let's do five, two BB five, one. And we're done with scheme one. Click save and then go back here and then let's click on scheme two. So for scheme two for background, let's erase this. Let's do DA3636. And then for text, click on this and then we'll do FF, FF, FF. So six Fs and just click on this. There we go. And then we are done with scheme two. Click save and just one more. Click on scheme three and for the background, we'll do F3, F3, F3. For the text, we're going to change it to black. So we can just do zero, 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 six zeros. And then that will be like a black text. And then we are done. Click save. So next we have typography. So let's click on this and then come down here and we are just going to change this font that we're using to bold. Click on select. So as you can see, we changed the font to bold. It just looks a little bit nicer. Font scale, we're going to leave it. And then for the body font, we're going to leave the font, but we are going to adjust the font size scale to 115. So as you can see here, that adjusted like the size over here, just looks a little bit nicer. And then we are done with this section. Click save. I like to save it every now and then so that I don't lose the progress. And this may seem a little bit tedious, but trust me, we're just going through just one time in the beginning and then your store will be set up and ready to go. So stick with me. We are going to complete this setup. So next one, let's click on layout. Page width, let's go to 1600 pixel. And the horizontal space, let's go to 24 pixel. 
And then for vertical space, let's go with 36 pixel. Okay, and then we're done. For animation, we are just going to leave it at default. The next one, let's click on buttons. So for corner radius, let's adjust this to 30 pixels. For shadow opacity, let's do 50%. Horizontal offset, let's do two pixel. And then the rest is fine. Click save. And then next we have variant pills. Click on this. For the shadow opacity, let's do 5%. Horizontal offset, let's do two pixels. And then the rest is perfect. Click Save. And next one, we have Inputs. Let's change the corner radius to 40 pixels. And then we're good. Click Save. Next, we have Product Cards. For the style, let's press on Card. And then for the color scheme, let's click on Change. And let's go with Scheme 3. We go and then come down here for border opacity. Let's click on a hundred percent corner radius. We can do 20. There we go. And we can add a little shadow opacity here to five percent. And then the rest looks good. Click on save. Next, we have collection cards. Expand this, click on card. And then for this, for the color scheme, let's also change it to Scheme 3. And then the rest of the option is perfect. Click Save. And then for block cards, content containers, and media, we can just skip and click on drop down and pop-ups. Let's increase the thickness to 4 pixels. And in corner radius, let's do 10 pixels. And then shadow opacity at 10%. And then horizontal offset, let's do four pixel. And then that should be good. Click save. Okay, next one is drawers. Let's increase the thickness to four pixels. And then the shadow opacity, let's increase this to 10%. And horizontal offset, four pixels. And then we're good. Click save. Next one, let's click on badges. So position on cards, let's select top left. Let's reduce the corner radius to 20 pixels. And let's change the color scheme to scheme two. And we are done with this one. Click save. All right, we're almost done. So for brand information, social media, search behavior, uh, all the default settings are fine. Currency format, that's fine as well. Let's come to cart. So for the card type, let's change this to drawer and then click save. So next let's click on checkout. For the banner background image, we don't need one. For the logo, I would select image, upload your image here. And then position, I would pick center. And then you can scroll down. And for the accents color, click on this. We could choose black. So one, two, one, two, one, two. And let's click on the button's color. I like to do a greenish color. Let's do 52 BB51. So like a green color. And for the errors color, let's click on this. And let's do DA3636. So green color for the button and the errors color would be red. And then checkout layout is one page. That's perfect. And click on save. And don't worry about any mistakes. We can always come in here to adjust any settings anytime, but that's the settings that we're gonna go with. So for the overall theme settings, we are done. Let's come back up to sections, click on this, click on announcement bar. And then on the right side here, we will change the color scheme to two. So we have scheme two. So that would make the announcement bar red. So that's nice and clear. And then instead of welcome to our store, let's change this wording. You can click on this. And then on the right side, you can change the text. So let's say we do free shipping, $65 plus. And then we could add a little emoji in the front. Let's do the package one. So that is what it looks like. We can click save. And that will be the nice announcement bar.
So next we are going to work on the image banner. So this is the image banner. We are going to customize one. So, so far this is what it looks like. So this is the mobile version, nice and clean. We can eliminate this text actually, we don't need this. So you can either delete this or just hide it. I'll just hide this. And for the buttons, let's click on the buttons. And let's change the text to shop now. And uncheck the outline button style. Okay, and then click save. And then for the footer, let's click on footer. And let's uncheck show email sign up. Let's uncheck enable follow on shop. Uncheck follow social media icons. You can also uncheck enable country and region selector since we are just going to focus on United States. But if you are selling internationally, you could definitely leave that on. And uncheck the enable language selector. And then the rest is fine. You can click on save. So we are almost done of the setting up so we can look at the desktop view. So next let's create the pages. So these are like the different pages. So we can exit this and go to pages. So that will be your contact page. We can first click on this. We can view page. All right, so that's a nice contact page that we could already use. Click back. You can click on add page. And for the title, let's do about us. So this will be the about us page. And then you can come up with your own description. We'll click save. So now we have the about us page and we also have the contact page. So next let's come to navigation and click on main menu. So here we have the main menu. So let's change the catalog page to shop now. And then it'll link to all products. That's fine. Apply changes. And that would be our contact page and then add menu item and type in about us and then click on this box here, go to pages. So you can link the about us page, click on about us, click add, save menu. So then when you come on the website, you can refresh this. And there we have the four different pages. So when people close to shop now, you know, you'll see all the products. Now we have not added any products, so nothing shows up here, but we are going to. And when you go to contact us, that's the contact page and about us page. You can obviously fill in your own information. So next let's create the banner. So before we can create a nice banner image for our website, we actually need to create some mockups first. So first let me show you how to create amazing looking mockups for our products. So there are a couple ways to go about it and I'll show you both ways. So first what you can do is come to Etsy and then just search up your product name and the mockups. So for example, if we are going to go with the Bella Canvas 3001, so I would just type in Bella Canvas 3001 mockups, and then you'll find the different mockup templates that you can purchase, and they are quite inexpensive, and this is a great way to go about it, so then your mockups will actually look different, will look better than the generic ones that, you know, everyone uses from, you know, the same websites. And this one is the one that I had purchased. So with this, you're able to get all these shirt colors as templates, and then you can just drop in your design and make your mockups. So this one is compatible with Canva. So that's why I liked about it. This is what the mockups look like. So you basically get a template for every color of the shirt. So let me zoom in so you can actually see the colors. So let's say if you want to edit one of these, so you can just come here, copy this, go to new file, right click, paste it, and you can just expand this, make it bigger delete the text part, make this bigger, and then center it. And then you can go ahead to import your design. So let's say we have this one, Corgi Mama, resize it, put it in the middle. Let's make it a little bit smaller, something like that. For the transparency, you can probably do 90. So that looks more realistic, like it's on a shirt. So what I like to do is to go to photo, search for like a wood background. I think that would look nice with a white shirt. So maybe something like this. So I can expand this. And then for the position, I'll move it to the back. So there we have a much better looking mockup. And to make it look even nicer, you can add something else to it. So let's do something like this. 
we can remove the background and let's move this to the bottom something like that just to make it look a little bit extra a little bit different so this is how you can create nicer mockups and if you prefer to have a model like a person wearing the shirt as the mockup let me show you how to do that one and what i do is to use a tool called vexels and with this is really amazing you can come to design tools and go to mockup generator and this is a really easy way to generate really good looking mockups and then you can go to browse and we are going to select t-shirts and then here you're able to find many different models to be the mockups so for example you can choose any one of these so let's go with this one just to show you so after you select the model you can just upload your design so let me go to creative fabrica and then i will just grab a design so let's just do this one so let me download this design and then i'll come back to vexels go to upload and then i'll find the design that i had just downloaded so i can just upload this png and then we have the mockups so i like to make this a little bit smaller so it looks better so let's say that's the size you can move the placement as well to make sure that it's lined nicely and there we have the mockups look how good that looks and when you're done you can just click download the large size is good click download click save and then here we have the mockups so that's how you can create amazing looking mockups using vexels and with vexels is really cool too because other than the mockup tool that they have you can also find many great designs here so let me show you so when you go to the design library and you can go to t-shirts and they have a lot of different designs that you could choose from that are really good and you can incorporate any of these designs into your own designs so this is a really great tool in terms of being able to do that and most of these are print ready and also editable and it's really easy to use you can just maybe click on this one and if you like this one you can just click on download and then you'll be able to download the design file and i'll just show you this one as an example so here we have the file and some of these files are in psd so that is like a photoshop file and if you don't have photoshop you can just freely use a tool called photo p so for example we can just drag this into photo p and then we'll be able to edit it and if you edit on Canva mainly, no worries. You can also find many other different, you know, PNGs or graphics that you're able to edit in Canva as well. So this one is definitely a great tool to use if you want like a all-in-one tool that can give you amazing looking designs as well as like an amazing looking mockup generator. Definitely will make your process of designing and also uploading mockups a lot easier. So next, let's create the banner image. So you can come to Canva, go to create a design. Go to custom size so let's do 4500 and 1500 pixel create a new design so here i would just select like a background so i would just come to design and just search for like clothing or clothing brand so i would just select one of these backgrounds so i'll delete all this and just leave the background and then i would just insert the mockup that we created so just drag it here so that's our first mockup. So I would just go to edit image, remove background. So we have a nice looking mockup with the person here. So I would just make this bigger. So something like that will look nice. So I will go back to Vexels because we need another model. Since we have a girl, so let's do a guy as well. So then it's balance. So I will just look for a male model here. So let's use this one. And let's do another design. So let's download this one and then click on upload. We will just upload that design. And there we go. And let's change the shirt color and then adjust the size a little bit. Adjust the placement. So that looks nice. So let's download this image and come back to Canva and then upload that image here. And then remove the background. And I want to make this bigger, so I will match the size of the first model. So something like that, I think it's good. So I can place it on the other side. So what we can do now is to just go to share and download this image. Download. And then come back to Shopify. And then we can go to online store. And then go to customize. You can click on the image banner. Select image. Add image upload that banner image and then click done 
Okay, so now it looks weird because we just have to adjust this setting right here. So image overlap opacity, we can turn this down to zero. And then for the banner height, what we can do is to select adapt to first image. For the desktop content position, let's select middle center, just so the button could be centered. And for the desktop content alignment, we'll do center as well. And the rest should be good. And then click save. And then we can look at mobile view. So there we go. There we have the banner image. And obviously you don't have to copy exactly what I do. Feel free to add your own style and design to it. But this is just me kind of showing you the process. So we are almost done here. Next, let's add a couple products so we could edit the product pages. So next, let me show you how to add your products. So we can come to Printify and we want to make sure that it's connected to our Shopify store. So you can see it's connected here. Next is go to catalog and select the item that you want to add to your store. So we'll pick t-shirts. We can close this. So we will go with the Bella Canvas 3001. So we will click on this. And then we can come here to click on show additional providers and you would just pick your preferred providers. So we will just go with Monster Digital, click on start designing. And then here we can just upload the design, click on upload and upload the design. So here we have the design so we can resize this and then place it in the middle. You can also use this control here to go left, right, middle, and then I will move this up a little bit more. So that looks good. You could preview it. So this will give you like a mock-up look. You can look at the different mock-ups. They do recommend you to look at the realistic color. And then we can come back to edit. And then we can actually select the different variants in color. So we have a few colors already selected. And you could check any of the shirt colors. But for example, sick, I'll just choose white, athletic heather, and also black and then come back here. So we can click on neck label. So you can add your logo as the neck label, which looks really nice. So you can just upload your logo here. So let's do this one. So something like that would be nice. We can expand this a little bit, place it in the middle. So there you go, there you have the neck label. So since this design is in black, if you go to the black colored shirt, you won't be able to see the design. What you can do here is to just click on make a specific design for black and then go upload a white version of the same design. And there we go. There we have the design. This looks a little bit too big. So maybe we can see the white one. You want to make sure that they are the same size. Okay, you can preview it. it looks nice. So same thing with the neck label. You can just upload a white letter version of it select the logo and there we go there we have a white letter version of the logo so front side neck label preview so that looks nice so we can come back to edit so for the other shirt it will be black lettering as in the white shirt and only the black shirt will be in the white colored lettering so when you're done you can click on save product Great job, you've created your first product. Continue to publish. And then you can come down here and then give it a title. So this would be Worry Less, Yoga More. You can come up with your description. You can also add a size chart here. And then the tax, you can add one if you want. And when you come down here, so the standard shipping has already been selected, so that's good. So that will only take two to five business days on average. And when you come down here, you're able to see the different pricing and you'll see the different variants. What you can do is to select all if you want to edit the price. So let's say we can do $26 for the t-shirts and we can click apply. So they will all become $26 and you're able to see the profit margin for each of the variant. So for example, when you go into the larger sizes, your profit margin decreases because the product cost is higher. What you can do is you can come here, let's say for 2x, you want to charge a dollar extra. So you can just press 27, enter, and then you'll see the profit number updated and also the profit margin. So for 3xl, let's do $28. And that will update your profit and also your profit margin. So let's say you're all done with this. 
what you can do is to come here to click publish and then this product will be published into your Shopify store. So here I would highly recommend you to order a sample of the products that you plan to sell. So that way you could be confident about the product's quality. Since you don't actively do the fulfillment of the product, it's really important to know that the products are of high quality. So I would definitely order your samples if you haven't already done so. So here we can see the products is published. So we can come to my products here and you'll be able to see that product here published. And when you want to add a second product, you won't need to start from scratch. You can just come here to the product, click on duplicate. And then here we have the duplicate of the product. We can just click on edit. And then you could just swap out the design, click on upload. Let's go with the second design. So go with the PNG file. And now we'll just resize this to a better size. Put in the middle and then delete the first image. And there we have the second design. Boom, preview, looks great. So for this one, let's just do black. So we'll deselect the white one and we'll deselect the athletic Heather. Click on save product and then come down here to give your product a title. So this would be yoga and coffee are all I need. You can just do your own description and also tags. We'll just leave it as is. The same exact shipping and the same exact prices and then just click on publish and there we go we have the second product created so in a few minutes you should be able to see that this status is published and when you go back to the shopify store go to products and you should be able to see the two products that we just added and we can open one we could preview it and this would be the product page and we are going to improve this actually. This is just the first step of adding the product. And let's also change the announcement bar. And let's go back to online store. Go to customize. So for the announcement bar, let's say free shipping on orders. That sounds better. $65 or more. Click save. And then let's go to the middle. Click on this drop down. Go to products. Click on default products. So here we can edit the product page. Let's go back to mobile view. So we are going to make the product page look a little bit better. So on the left side, you will see the template. We can click on text. We don't want that. And let's click on title. Title looks good. Price as well. Variant picker. I prefer pills, which is already had selected. So if you select drop down, so the choices will be like a drop down. So I like pills, so that's up to you. Quantity selector will leave it. The buy button as well will leave it. And the description, because this I think is just way too long and I don't think it looks good. So we are going to just hide the description. So we can just click on this button right here. So that's like hidden, so it just looks cleaner. The share button, we can just get rid of it. We don't need that, All right? So this looks a lot more clean. So what we're gonna do next is to add block here and then add collapsible row. Come to the right side and we will write premium quality t-shirts. And for the icon, we can select the shirt icon. So you see a little nice shirt icon and that says premium quality t-shirts. And then we are going to add another block. Let's go to collapsible row again. In this one, we are going to add a size chart because that's important. So we'll put in size chart here. So let's do a ruler. And then we are going to select page, create page. For the title, we are going to type in size chart. And then next we will go to printify. We will go to the actual product that we are listing. So go to catalog, pick out the t-shirts. We are going to pick the Bella Canvas 3001. And then on this page, you can scroll down. You'll be able to find the size chart here. I would just screenshot this. And after you have the screenshot, go back to Shopify and then go to add image, insert image, add image here, and then add the screenshot, click done. And then we can center it. So alignment, center align, click save, and then go back to the store click on a size chart 
And on the right side, click on Select Page, and then click on Size Chart. Select on the bottom, and then click Save. And then when you click on a drop down on the size chart, and there you'll be able to see the size chart. It may seem small, but people can zoom in on their phone uh, pretty easily. So that's not an issue. That just looks really nice and handy to have like a size chart there. So we are going to add another collapsible row. And then for this one, we are going to write all orders shipped in three to five days. And then we can select the truck icon click save and then the last one we are just going to add the last collapsible row and this one is going to say returns are easy and let's do the heart icon so that looks nice click save and then here we are done with the product page and obviously you can upload a nicer mock-up like the ones I showed you so we can exit this Next, let's come back to our Shopify store and then we can remove the password. So we can click on manage password. So we need to add a stored address and then just click save. And then for the password protection, you can just uncheck restrict access to visitors with this password and then click save. And then we'll say your online store is open to everyone. So we can view store. There we go. So now our store is live. So we can click on one of the product. This is what it looks like. We can go to inspect to get a look of the mobile view. So everything looks clean and we can click on this. So those are the four tabs. So when we click on contact, that's a contact page. Shop now, we see the other products. So we can click on this. So when you first sync up the product, you may see that the product is sold out. That is just because it takes a few minutes for Printify and Shopify to get everything all synced up. So that's perfectly normal. So if the product that you're selling has stock in Printify, this should become available after a few minutes. So that's how you set up a high converting print on demand Shopify store. So that concludes this print on demand tutorial. And if you're still watching this, I applaud you. This was definitely a long video. And if you got value from this, please like the video and subscribe to this channel. And I will continue to post content just like this. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next video.